Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 40th installment of the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series. I'm Dr. Raymond Francis Sarmiento from the National Telehealth Center, National Institutes of Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. Last week, our topic was on who should not be vaccinated. So we got a tremendous amount of response from those who attended and suggested that we have a dedicated webinar for our allergologists. So please stay tuned for more information on those upcoming webinars. We continue on uh, for today's webinar on the topic of COVID-19 vaccines, uh, but specifically uh, focusing on the identification of healthcare workers as a priority group and how will healthcare workers be vaccinated against COVID-19. As always, I look forward to Friday noons because I get to spend hosting duties with my partner in crime. She's a beloved mentor and also an adjunct research faculty with the National Telehealth Center at UT Manila and a very well-known internationally regarded public health expert, Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado. Dr. Susie? Hi, good afternoon, Raymond. Uh, maayong unto, maayong buntag, naimbag adlaw, buenos dias a todo. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, Raymond, so many people are watching us from all over the country. I just noted here on the chat box, Antipolo, Valenzuela, Alfonso Cavite, Tacloban, Dumaguete, Pampanga, Zamboanga, Laguna, Batangas, Taguig, Riyadh, Davao, Mindoro Oriental, Mountain Province, Subic Bay, Nueva Vizcaya, Rizal Medical Center, Philippine General Hospital, mabuhay po kayong lahat. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. We've got a very exciting webinar today. Pag-usapan po natin ang pagbabahuna nyo, right? So this is about vaccination of health workers. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube or Facebook or watching on the playback, we like to welcome you. And um, we're looking forward to an afternoon of learning. Kasi lahat po tayo, kailangan natututo palagi. Mabilis ang pagbabago ng mga pangyayari. So kailangan po natututo tayo. But before we go ahead, uh, Raymond, I've got a um, announcement. Uh, so we have a special announcement for everyone. Um, TVUP, take it away. Selfless acts of courage and kindness show us who we are as Filipinos. These heroes whose acts of pag-aalay are inspiration for all Filipinos are now facing difficult challenges brought about by the pandemic. Watch the free festival screening of video entries on the TVUP Facebook. Putan niyo po yan, TVUP Facebook page and the TVUP YouTube channel. And don't forget to click like. You'll have to pass the vote for the Choose to Go People's Choice Award. Catch the Global Life Streaming Virtual Award Ceremony on Feb 28 at 6 p.m. Manila time. So now back to our program. Uh, we're all talking about, hold it, my screen's not open. Okay, there we go. So we're all talking about vaccination of health workers and we're going to hear a very interesting presentation from the Philippine General Hospital. Ano po yung paghahanda na ginagawa doon? And we have um, a reaction from private hospital, the Asian uh, Medical Center. And then we also have a response from a local government unit from uh, Navota City. So, sabahin po kami, madami po tayong matututunan sa araw na ito. Over to you, Raymond. Thank you, Dr. Susie. Uh, gaya po na sabi ni Dr. Susie po, no? this will be, we hope, will be another informative session uh, as the whole of our country prepares for the vaccination rollout. Uh, we actually are cognizant of the fact that many of you, most of you, uh, know that the vaccines are just around, right around the corner. Uh, very, very likely that the first round of vaccinations will start next week. But before we go into that, let me take this opportunity po to really um, thank the very hardworking team behind the Stop COVID Death webinar series, uh, University of the Philippine System. Uh, at UP Manila and at UP Manila NIH, the, uh, the National Telehealth Center, the UP Philippine General Hospital, and the College of Medicine. We also will not be well, essentially be successful without the technical help from the UP Information Technology Development Center. And finally, especially po sa mga nanonood po 
sa ating YouTube channel ng TVUP which is the Internet Television Network of the University of the Philippines. Maraming salamat po at pa sa patuloy po niyong pagtangkilik at panonood at uh, pagsabay sa mga pag-aaral po natin each and every week on how we could stop COVID deaths. Dr. Susie? Yeah, Raymond, you know, I'm, I'm just looking at how many webinars we've done. This is the 40th. So every Friday po yan, ano? and I think for some of our participants, you're with us every week. Uh, we thank you for that. Dahil kung hindi po sa inyo, wala po tayong webinar na ganito. So malaki po po sa salamat namin sa inyo dahil, you know, we all have to learn. We all have to listen to what, what the experts are finding out about COVID-19. And I think we are making... Uh, an impact in our own little way. And hopefully we are able to help you also as you manage your patients who have COVID and also prevent the transmission of COVID in the community. So we have uh, very special topics coming up in the next few weeks. We'll announce that later. But meanwhile, just always stay with us on Fridays at, uh, at 12 noon. Raymond. Thank you, Dr. Susie. So TVUP, may we have our shot Uh, with regards to the certificates. So maraming salamat po, TVUP, sa mga patuloy po nagtatanong, patuloy din pong nagdirect message sa ating messenger, sa ating mga email. Uh, ito po ay ang, ang itsura po ng certificate of attendance that you will be eligible to receive if you stay on for at least 50% of the webinar duration. Kasama po nito, kaakibat po nito ay kopya ng mga slide presentations ng mga speakers and resource persons that we have for that particular uh, webinar. So please be very, very careful when you input and type in your registration name in the registration link just because uh, that will be how it would appear in your certificate. To date, we have been able to disseminate all the certificates for the eligible recipients up until webinar 39 So if you believe that you should have received a certificate, pop, please email stopcoviddeaths at up.edu.ph and we will try to review our records with regards to that. Okay, over to, to Dr. Susie for the introduction of our opening remarks speaker. Okay, for our opening remarks, we have none other than our Executive Vice President for the University of the Philippines, Dr. Ted Rabosa. Ted, welcome to your webinar. Thank you very much, Susie. And... Uh... Good afternoon to everyone. First of all, let me greet everyone a happy Chinese New Year. 2021 is the year of the metal ox, which symbolizes diligence, honesty, reliability, stability, perseverance, power, stubbornness, and excellence. Each animal is paired with a particular element, which occurs once every 60 years. So this is the first year of the metal ox since 1961. Last Friday, I, I missed all of you being able to close the session on a very interesting topic on who should not be vaccinated. Sabi nga ng anak kong millennial, Daddy, napakaraming ganap. <laughs> so this is exactly what's happening in vaccination. Last Friday, as we were having the webinar, we were having a walkthrough of the uh, logistics and supply company that are trying to offer their services to the arrival of the vaccines and its distribution. After that, we met with WHO representatives. And uh, then uh, just last, uh, a few days ago, we had the simulation of the arrival of the uh, vaccines from COVAX facility, specifically the one with the minus 70. And uh, uh, the simulation went through from the airport, unloading it, putting it in vehicles, bringing it to the cold storage in RITM, and then sending it to the Philippine General Hospital, to uh, Lung Center, and to Jose Reyes. So true enough, uh, the dress rehearsals are being done. Uh, it seems to me that the vaccines are like precious and as gold. Last night, I attended an impromptu HPAC, I don't know, a protest or a <laughs> statement wherein they're opposing a Senate bill that's allowing uh, local governments to purchase vaccines on their own with just the EUA uh, without the national government. So there's also some turmoil in that because that proves to me that everyone wants to get vaccinated. Everybody's trying to get ahead of the line or ahead of the queue. It's very important that we respect the process and allow the vaccination to happen. So I think the whole uh, Stop COVID debts team 
for being able to bring this information and this reliable, valuable information. And I congratulate Gap for sharing what he, he is, has been doing. I mean, I went to PGH for my pre-registration. I even got my serologic test for uh, possible antibodies that I had tested positive last uh, July. And uh, I'm also very happy that they have decided to put in our spokesperson. I think he's here. Uh, Dr. Jonas Del Rosario has been working so hard for the past year. I think he will the first one. He will be the first one to get a jab, uh, and that will be the uh, most historical uh, event that he's going to be experiencing if the vaccines arrive. So there's been some delay, as you heard in the announcement, but I will not delay anymore. The speaker, I think you will learn a lot from Dr. Legaspi and how he's been planning to roll it out. PGH will the first. If we fumble, please do not laugh. Just make it better and improve it in your hospitals and uh, learn from this session. Maraming salamat. Good afternoon. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you very much. It's Dr. Ted Herboza, Executive Vice President of the University of the Philippines. And we're always happy to have Ted because he's in the know. He's uh, advisor to the National Task Force. And he's always able to give us updates and guidance on how this whole thing is going. So it's I think reassuring to hear that there are uh, simulation drills, that there are rehearsals. And I think the spirit of all of this is that we are learning together. Nobody knows how to do it perfectly. But you know, if we work together, we're, we're going to get this done. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ted Herbosa. All right, before we go to um, our uh, opinion poll, Raymond, uh, I just want to announce to our audience that we have. Or muna tayo mag opinion poll. <laughs> Create on your opinion poll. Eh. I want to announce to the audience we're going to try something new today. Okay, so get ready. Um, all the time, most of the time, or all these forty weeks, if you have a question, you put it in the Q and A box, and we never get to see you. So today we're going to select maybe one or two of you who's videos whose cameras we will open. And if your question is upvoted, meaning you put your questions in the Q&A box, okay? If your question is upvoted, many people like your question, we're going to inform you ahead of time and we're going to open your video so that we can see you. This is your cameo appearance in the webinar, but it's really because we want you to participate and we want to find ways to make this more interactive. So. Kung maganda yung tanong nyo, uh, hindi lang kayo magtatanong sa Q&A, magtatanong kayo on the camera, okay? So, uh, we'll try it today, and let's see how that goes. Okay, Raymond, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Susi. So, please stand by. Uh, alam ko po, ay medyo nagulat po kayo to, no? pero we really would like to engage our audience even further. We have nearly 4,200 registrants for this webinar. And right now, there are 1,800, nearly 1,900 po na attendees in this webinar. As always, we want to emphasize na ang maximum capacity po nito ay 3,000 participants. So please, kung yung pong uh, mga kakilala nyo who signed up, uh, please let them know that we have started and please join in the Zoom webinar. Okay. Ito po ay ating uh, nakagulaan na starting for year 2021. Really, it's an audience survey and opinion poll. Uh, we just wanted to get uh, a sense of the demographics of our audience. The first question reads, what place are you viewing this webinar from? So mapapansin niyo po, may mga pagkakagrupo po ng mga regions at saka mga lugar. So hopefully, uh, a lot of our attendees uh, will be able to key in their answers. Uh, we are seeing that majority of those uh, attending are from the national capital region. There is, and the least would be a little, a little bit around the uh, one percent po pala, Western and Central Mindanao. Okay, so tuloy, patuloy nyo lang pong ikiin ang inyong mga sagot. What is your line of work? Um, it's a very, very close race between nursing and medicine as always, but we have other um, uh, participants po from other sectors, uh, sana po mas matis out pa po natin kung ano po yung others, do sa others na sector po nila. And then uh, the third question, 
who are considered health workers? Napaka very very straightforward question but uh, medyo uh, in the context of the COVID-19 vaccination ito po ay something that gets uh, probably overlooked po. Uh, the options are doctors, nurses and nursing aides, medical technologists, dentists, maintenance personnel, janitorial services, security guards, midwives, barangay health workers and all of the above. So patuloy niyo lang pong Sagutan ang ating mga tanong as we move on to question number four. How will the vaccinations be paid for? So marami pong nakalagay dyan, ano? The Department of Health, the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, uh, maglalabas po ng pera out of pocket, private hospital management, the local government unit, and all of the above. So yun po, patuloy nyo lang pong sagutan ang ating mga katanungan pero bago po tayo magtapos sa ating audience survey and opinion poll which we are seeing uh, na marami po talaga uh, mostly in the Philippines we just wanted to give a shout out to those who have registered coming in from the Wesleyan University Philippines in Aurora Central Luzon Sampaloc Medical Co Community Medi Medi Sampaloc Medicare Community Hospital in Sampaloc Quezon Province uh, from the Clarin Community Hospital in Bohol, the Basi Municipal Health Office in Samar, and Hijra Infirmary in Marawi City in Barm. Internationally, we are also being seen, and you will not uh, guess where our very, very unique attendee will, is, is from. He, uh, he or she is from the University of Monastir. Alam niyo po ba saan ang Monastir? It is from Tunisia. That's the very first time that we will be having uh, to, uh, someone from Tunisia to attend. Uh, we have one from Adam University in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, uh, from Jelutong, Malaysia, from Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam, from Singapore, uh, Kota Semarang, Indonesia, Doha, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, uh, the Ministry of Health in Ras Al Kaima, United Arab Emirates, the Al Masara Hospital Ministry of Health, Oman, uh, and then in the United States. Uh, Penn Medicine in Princeton, Univers Princeton, New Jersey, and then the Philippine Academy of Family Physicians, but coming from Winnipeg in Canada, Chelsea Park in Canada, and also Niagara Falls, ang ating uh, masugid na tagapanood from Ontario, Canada. The last question po reads, what are the steps to take for health workers to be vaccinated for COVID-19? The options are, I will have to take an online survey, Option two, I will have to get on the master list. Option three, register online. Option four, schedule a vaccination appointment. Option five, go to the vaccination sites on, on scheduled date and time. Option six, monitor for 30 minutes to an hour. Immediately after vaccination, second to the last repeat vaccination process para po makompleto ang dalawang doses. And then finally, Lahat ng nabanggit or all of the above. So maraming salamat po dahil po over 1,200 of our attendees have uh, participated in this survey. So maraming salamat po para sa inyong active participation. Dr. Susie? Thank you very much, Raymond. So as you know, we want to make this as interesting as possible and TVUP has prepared some interviews of people on the street no, uh, we said, okay, let's try to get a sense of what some health workers are thinking. And uh, TVUP was able to capture some of these interviews. So let's cue that, Raymond. Pag uh, announced talaga na may pandemic, it was February or March. Medyo talagang we're very anxious. Meron din mga parang fear or anxiety regarding sa vaccine side, side effects. Pero sabi naman, lagi ka nang babasan sa news or sa mga ano. At first talaga may mararamdaman kang swelling. For us, uh, the term uh, herd immunity comes into mind. And it simply implies that the more people vaccinated are uh, around, the lesser chances of contracting the disease. Sa ngayong bago ng tinatawag namin second wave, meron na talaga kami ngayon sa mga staff, sa mga lahat ng mga frontliner, healthcare worker, meron na kami every week na swab sa mismo sa aming facilities. COVID vaccination here started last December 30, 
with healthcare workers followed by the elderly age 70 and older this February. Ako na ano na ako na vaccine na ako sabay-sabay na kami sa mga ano sa mga ano namin sa aming mga kasama ang mga vulnerable namin ng mga mga residents namin. Thing as bigyan kami I've had my first dose I'm waiting for my second dose next month. I was vaccinated last January 29 for my first dose. You just sign up tapos you just turn up may mga vaccinated so and then they just give it to you. Parang they're not gonna offer to everyone you Nag-wait na lang kami nung second dose after 21 days. Ang sabi, kami daw uunahin mga healthcare, healthcare workers. Good thing dun sa ramen, meron naman silang mga um, nakalatag na plans. Like, um, meron kami, magre-register lang kami dun. We are actually uh, undergoing pre-vaccination scan, screening interviews. I don't know kung available na yung vaccine. Nandito na sa institution namin or nasa Pilipinas na. But yun, they do step by step. Interviews um, asking us about our other diseases and clearing us for the vaccination. On the process, kumbaga, nagkumukuha pa lang ng consent ang aming institution. Since we're young, we've had vaccine, iba, like we've always had like the MMR. But when you're gonna start working in hospital, you get the hep B vaccine, you get flu vaccine every year. So I do believe that sana encourage most that everyone really, not, not most people, everyone that mag COVID vaccine when you can. Thank you very much, TVUP. As you know, the Philippines is probably still the number one um, source of nurses in the world. And I think the number, the second or the third source of doctors in the world. And um, I'd just like to thank TVUP for getting those interviews from mga kababayan natin, kapwa health workers na nasa ibang bansa na nabakunahan na. At uh, ngayon po, maalamin natin ang yung paghahanda dito sa Pilipinas. How is this going to happen? Where are you going to do? What? Or who's going to get vaccinated? Paano ba yan? So to give us uh, an overview of preparations in the Philippine General Hospital, we would like to welcome Dr. Gapri Gaspi. He's actually recorded his presentation, but he will be joining us live for the uh, panel discussion. So TVUP, let's play Dr. Gaspi's presentation. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure once again uh, to be here with you uh, in our Stop COVID-19 uh, uh, series um, which uh, aims to uh, tackle the various aspects uh, related to handling this pandemic and I think it's appropriate that, that after almost a year of uh, battling this uh, dreaded disease we are now finally uh, uh, faced with the possibility of the vaccine arriving in our country and uh, I'd like to share some of uh, the preparations that we've done uh, expecting this to come soon. As in any plan, you have to have a good message before you uh, deploy anything. And I think the message that I've given to our employees and our staff members on January 18 emphasized the fact that let's we should trust the people who have chosen the vaccines for us. Um, anyway, since most of them are from UP or PGH. And of course, we should always be uh, uh, aware of the information that we need um, to have to uh, uh, make us help us decide on uh, whether to take it or not. I think uh, an assurance from myself that I'll be the first one to take the vaccine, whatever brand that comes, um, hopefully helps in a way establish more confidence for us, for our uh, uh, employees to have it as well. So with that set into place, I think uh, we next thing to do was to choose the people who uh, run the program and uh, I think there are no better people than those who have run the COVID crisis uh, management with us also all through these months. And uh, uh, I'd like to make special mention on the role of Dr. Homer Ko, who was, uh, who was very instrumental in the micro planning of all of these steps that you're going to hear from me this morning, this afternoon. And uh, aside from the fact, of course, that he set up the PGH electronic medical record system called Radish. The PGH vaccination team was formed under our Deputy Director for Administration, uh, Dr. 
Teresa Benedicto and um, our Deputy Director for Nursing, Ms. Cecil Peña, and it comprised of a uh, micro planning coordinator under Dr. Homer Ko. Uh, our profiling data management uh, in charge of the master list under our HR head. Of course, our cold chain and logistics under property and pharmacy, risk communication and uh, uh, community engagement. That's, of course, our IEC uh, chair, Dr. Eric Berberabe. Registration for and the vaccination process itself is Dr. Uh, under Dr. Chiel Samonte of uh, the UPHS, and our um, management of uh, adverse effects uh, following immunization uh, was put under the Department of Emergency Medicine um, in conjunction with the people from IDS, from um, immunology, of course, and uh, of course our pharmacies. Not to forget also that we had to put a, a mechanism to take care of our waste materials. The first uh, general meeting, of course, there were meetings before this, uh, small pocket meetings, but the general meeting was held on February 8, uh, 2021, when we were told uh, via phone call from uh, DOH and from uh, uh, Secretary Vince Dizon that uh, the projected vaccination of uh, the PGH uh, community is on February, was on February 15. I got that call around February 6. So um, that put us in quite a panic mode, but uh, as um, in most things, if you have the right people, as I said, things got into motion and uh, we prepared ourselves for that particular day, if ever it came. So aside from having a, a, a message, good message, having good people, I think a good plan, which is very flexible is what uh, is what is mandatory for a, in a crisis situation. So we had the plan that we hatched at around January 18 and um, it came to fruition in uh, February 9 when we started uh, the first phase of our vaccine deployment program, program which is to um, um, pre-register uh, our uh, staff members in the PGH community. Sorry. So all these plans are in conjunction with the uh, online profiling and vaccination process flow from the Department of Health. And it required multiple steps that we followed to the letter so that uh, we are um, in consonance with the uh, plan for all of hospitals around the country. And we were in close coordination with their uh, officials from uh, planning to actual the simulation of uh, processes that were uh, necessary for this program. So in general, the, the steps that were taken was to generate a master list uh, of our employees and hospital staff. And it was supposed to be uploaded to the DOHCIR, but now uh, we have got word that uh, the um, information system is being transferred to the ICT. Uh, the Vaccine Information Management System uh, Immunization Registry, or VIMS-IR. So, and um, in, in, uh, uh, in support of all of those, we started uh, preparing the infrastructure, manpower, and supplies needed for these activities until we get to the next steps uh, of registration and then vaccination. So, um, just to, uh, uh, be uh, to have a... Uh, document uh, guiding us through this uh, process. Uh, Dr. Homer co-produced a micro-planning document for our COVID-19 vaccination plan, which um, contained in its 15 uh, pages the necessary information that guided us through this. Of course, a big question that came after that is, who do we include? We just, we just followed the DOH and WHO uh, uh, guidelines. And uh, uh, of course, the uh, primary uh, objective was to protect the, those people who directly handle, handle our COVID patients and the people who support them, including our DOH volunteers, uh, but including the uh, uh, outsource personnel who work in the hospital and those privately employed. Uh, I think the basic principle that uh, I would think that I followed or we followed for this is that anyone within the confines of the four walls of PGH from Pedro Hill to Taft to Padre Faro and Robinsons, anyone who moves inside should be included uh, in the list. So 
Uh, also in preparation as advised by DOH for any excess vaccine um, that, that may uh, come up because of uh, some no-shows or maybe a last minute uh, um, cancellations. We included a, um, a second tier of vaccines uh, that included, of course, our professor Mary Tai and um, our retired physicians. Uh, among others. So all in all, we estimated around a total of 6,000 uh, enrollees or registrants into the program. But prior to even starting anything, we uh, wanted to know how much um, people knew about the uh, uh, vaccination process and uh, started putting out uh, uh, Q&As and FAQs to uh, guide them uh, um, uh, into their decision making. And hopefully with all of the information given to them, they would make the decision uh, uh, whether to take the vaccine or not. And uh, we were happy to note that after the end of, um, I think uh, almost three weeks of uh, information campaign, uh, with 2007 uh, personal surveyed, we got a 74% um, um, affirmative uh, response of those who are going to take the vaccine, um, willing to take the vaccine and maybe uh, maybe 25.3% uh, uh, said maybe they will take it uh, in the future and only 0.6% said no, no, that they will not take it at all. So um, after knowing more or less how much people we have uh, to deal with, and I would say if, if that was uh, uh, con considering the community in PJS, I would say maybe that will be around 4,000 to 4,500 uh, of the 6,000. So we started planning out the following the DOH processes um, of first uh, producing the master list to cover all of these uh, potential registrants and uh, screening them for uh, through a pre-registration and again producing the master list of vaccines. No? So the, pro the process will lead eventually to of course vaccinations um, of the two doses if we get the uh, vaccines that require such. The pre-registration activity was uh, is important because it um, is required. Of course, it was also because it was required by the Department of Health. But I think it's important to so that we can procure the right quantity of vaccines by knowing how many exactly uh, are willing to take it. And 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 since my mandate on the team is no waste, zero waste of vaccine, I think this is uh, really going to be very important. Of course, we have to verify who takes it. And import, more equally important is knowing which uh, risk factors um, are present and which make it other um, uh, registrants ineligible, ineligible for the vaccine. Uh, we need to get the consent and maybe uh, organize a, a uh, uh, vaccination card which will contain information uh, about them. Uh, we chose the PGH atrium for those of you who have, have been there. It's an open space in the front part of the hospital. Um, so very ideal for a large crowd to gather. And uh, also the other advantage is scalable in terms of seating capacity, you know, because we have multiple corridors in the first floor and the second floor, if we need to expand from the atrium uh, floor area itself. You know? so, our pre-registration was originally scheduled for February 9 to 17, but because of the turn of events uh, and because of this, this by discovering also that um, it took shorter than we expected. I mean, the registration per individual, we were able to finish this in uh, three days instead. No? The, uh, as I said, the original plan was uh, almost more than a week of uh, registration. Um, after generating the master list, um, <clears throat> which is done by HR, uh, we uh, uh, planned on 18 screening stations uh, equipped with laptops and six printers manned by our residents and consultants from family medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine. Uh, the waiting area uh, is very mobile because it's a move system. People don't spend more than five or 10 minutes in their seats because they, as the lines uh, move, they also have to move. So we estimated five to 10 minutes per registrant. So this, uh, this is our output projection table for almost five, for around 5,800 uh, uh, registrants. It would, uh, it would take us this much per day 
uh, so that we reach that number. Um, so uh, there was also a, um, a uh, planning of uh, the units, uh, the uh, individual registrants coming from different units at different times. So they were organized to uh, be earmarked uh, the uh, uh, priority for uh, nursing uh, post duty uh, uh, individuals um, and so on down the line. So um, this was done so that uh, there will be too much crowding uh, in the um, uh, registration area. So prior to the registration also, we put out these infographics to walk them through the uh, process itself. And um, this were exactly done uh, when they were there in their tables. Uh, we were there asked questions regarding their uh, health. And of course they were asked for their verbal consent uh, and it was noted in their uh, uh, form. Um, after everything has been uh, extracted, all the information has been extracted, uh, med uh, medical wise, they're given a, a sticker uh, wherein um, it, it will indicate um, with a color coding whether they'll be observed for 15, 30 minutes or one hour. And another sticker that uh, uh, this uh, 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 added onto the other um, uh, other colors, if the patient is on uh, blood thinners or um, or uh, that will make him high at high risk for uh, bleeding with the usual needle that we use. So these patients or this uh, vaccinist will have a smaller needle. So after their completion, they proceed to, sub to uh, uh, exit and um, bring the paper with that. So this is the setup that we had. Um, we uh, each uh, uh, screening or uh, uh, interviewing um, Doctor had its own his own laptop and it was and um, uh, the uh, forms were printed in a nearby printer um, and this this afforded us a very rapid turn turnover of uh, registrants on a daily basis. So we had to do our simulation on February uh, uh, eight and um, that's when we found out that we can actually go faster than we thought and. Uh, we aim to end the pre-registration of 6,000 um, individuals in three days, and we were able to do that. So you see the, the organized uh, uh, line, uh, the move system for those waiting, and the wrap and the quick turnover of uh, registrants in the screening tables. Uh, I think the the atmosphere in the atrium um, was also very vibrant. Uh, the the uh, of course the garden effect helps in that, but also the, the fact that this some most of these people haven't seen each other in 10 months. <laughs> and now they, they are here uh, in it was like a fiesta um, during that day. So, so um, uh, our staff from all the units uh, were there. We had our uh, VIPs, uh, of course, uh, Director uh, Domingo, Eric Domingo of FDA, decided to have his vaccination with us. And we had some retirees here. We see Dr. Takata um, being screened uh, uh, for the, uh, being registered for the vaccination. At the end of all that, we get this paper. This is mine. My, uh, my comorbid, uh, hypertensive comorbidity was placed there. Uh, my medication, uh, I, my history of COVID, uh, illness because if it's within less within three months you will be given the option not to take the vaccine um, and of course my um, designation is a 15 minute in the 15 minute uh, monitoring area the um, uh, I just got this from another doctor who <clears throat> who was on uh, aspirin who was on copidrogrel and um, um, other comorbidities as well but uh, I think this is just to emphasize the fact that an additional pink sticker was placed there so that um, uh, the vaccinee will, um, will know to, uh, to use a, a smaller needle for this patient. So we, we had an alternative method of uh, <clears throat> enrolling or registering and it was through online and we reserved this for our very senior um, faculty or retirees and Professor Emeriti whom we did not require to come to uh, PGH anymore. And 
in effect, you get the same uh, information as you did when you walk in. Uh, we reserve this for very few because, uh, as I said, the validation um, has to be personal as uh, per uh, mandated by DOH. And we're happy to know that at the end of uh, three, uh, this was um, yesterday, half a day. We haven't, I haven't gotten the information after uh, lunchtime uh, yesterday, but you can see here the uh, high turnout of, uh, of our um, employees and our staff. And of course, the, the rest of the uh, uh, PGH community coming in. And um, on a daily basis, uh, <clears throat> we hit more to around 2,000 on the average and probably hit 6,000 by the end of uh, the third day. And what is very uh, encouraging is that of the uh, people who walked in and uh, registered, 93.6% gave the consent. So you see, we required everyone to come in because um, it, uh, it, it is, uh, we'd like to know how many would like to have the vaccine or not. And of course, to give them a chance, um, just in case they change their mind in the interim of uh, before, after registration and the vaccine coming in, they change their mind, we can still uh, allow them uh, to come in since their information is already uh, with us. So, um, but we were surprised to see first that we could do it so fast. And secondly, that people really came in um, and it was, as I said, like a fiesta. So having done all of that, we are now preparing for the actual vaccination, which is the crew of the every, all these uh, activities that we're doing. So, um, so far we have done our vaccine deliveries uh, uh, from the airport to RITM to PGH and all three other uh, uh, hospitals in Metro Manila designated to receive this, which is uh, uh, Lung Center, the uh, Tala Hospital and uh, East Avenue Medical Center. No? So it took us, it took the, the truck from RITM around 28 minutes to get to us. And we received it amidst the um, glare of lights from our media co uh, uh, colleagues. And it was received by our chief pharmacist, Ms. Pam Nala. Um, initially, we, we uh, just had uh, our uh, two to eight degree uh, centigrade bioref. Um, but uh, just yesterday, the ultra low temperature freezer arrived. So we will be able to store our vaccines as they come from RITM directly uh, in minus eight, minus 70 degree uh, temperature. We are um, placing one bioref near the site of the uh, um, vaccination in the um, atrium. So the um, company that was uh, designated to bring this um, acted as if it was the real thing during that day, so so we we were initially told that uh, we're getting the Pfizer vaccine. So this is how it just for everyone to have an idea. It comes in a, a box of five trays, and one tray um, has 195 vials, which gives us five doses on the average, which will give uh, 4,875 for the five doses. So since we have more vaccines than projected vaccines than that, we're asking for maybe uh, a few more trays so that uh, we're able to cover everyone. This is the comparison of our um, uh, eligible population and total doses given compared to Lung Center and uh, Tala uh, Hospital. So we're really quite big, but I say, but this was submitted, this uh, population, it's only for our plantilla position. When they told us that we could include uh, outsourced personnel, um, uh, privately hired uh, uh, contractuals and job orders, we, of course, we, we ballooned up and we included our students and our attending physicians. So we ballooned up to almost 6,000. So hopefully we are able uh, to uh, convince them uh, to give us more vaccines. Um, and, uh, as, and we have promised as well that if you have any excess after we share it with other hospitals who, will, who we will accept in PGH uh, during our vaccination period, or maybe even after if DOH require, uh, requests us to do so. So during the vaccination day itself, um, people again are screened and they are asked to sign an informed consent. And uh, 
the actual uh, health check is done here with blood pressure and temperature uh, determination. And then once they're really cleared for uh, deemed healthy for vaccination, um, they go to the stations and uh, for vaccination, eventually uh, into our observation area, 15, 30, 15 minutes or 30 minutes or maybe an hour uh, for those who need more, uh, more time to be observed. And the observation or the monitoring doesn't stop uh, in that area as they proceed with their daily lives, we monitor them all the way up to a year. So, so this is the general setup. Um, H, our HR does the initial screening in the uh, uh, first part of the uh, process, uh, just to be sure they, they validate the identity as well, that they are complete with their uh, requirements, uh, especially the form that they have, that they were given. Uh, they now go to the pre-screening where our, um, um, again, our doctors um, are uh, give a, take a more detailed uh, health screening and uh, vital signs uh, check. And then uh, they're given the signal with their consent form. They proceed to the vaccination area where we have a three groups of five each. Why five? Because as I said, one tray a uh, one vial um, can give five doses. So each vial will be distributed to one of uh, these three uh, rows of uh, nurses doing the of vaccinators. Um, but uh, the vaccines are prepared by our uh, uh, pharmacists in a separate table so they don't get bothered with mixing the diluent and the, and the uh, vaccine. So uh, there is a third person that does the um, documentation, uh, necessary documentation, again, uh, taking away that role from our vaccinators. So as the, um, as the vaccine is finished their um, inoculation, they are sent to the monitoring area, whether 15 minutes or 30 or one hour. Uh, we have prepared some beds near that area, just in case some people will need to lie down for some reason. So. This is the, again, going back to the atrium, the screening and vaccination will happen here. And then they proceed to this area, which is even more shaded, where they wait uh, to be monitored, observed for uh, the number, uh, number of minutes assigned to them. There's a small, small door that leads to our um, resuscitation area manned by our DEMS and uh, anesthesia. If there's an overflow of patients, we. Uh, two choke points that we think will happen no? in the screening area uh, and in the monitoring area. So we are prepared to escalate the space just in case we can proceed to the second floor here and we can expand more uh, to another uh, site, another more to uh, uh, other areas near these tables for the screening. So we have identified those choke points. We think the fastest part actually is the vaccination process. The vaccine is quite sensitive. So the preparation is, uh, is very tedious. Um, the transport is tedious. If you're using Pfizer, it is uh, quite um, motion and uh, temperature sensitive. So it, it takes a lot of care uh, to uh, handle it. And also, of course, we have the, uh, 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 we should, we are not able to access the <clears throat> syringes that have low dead space to optimize the doses per vial, which some people say um, go as high as six and maybe even seven in, uh, if you compute um, uh, the total number of uh, uh, volume in, the, in a process vial, which is around 2.25 cc. No? Um, uh, so what to optimize the vaccine use, we uh, also group them properly, as I said, in groups of five, so that uh, the give the organizing the uh, distribution and eventual use of the vaccine vials is optimized. Um, we overbook by 20% as uh, uh, suggested by DOH, so that we uh, are able to manage excess of those who do not, of those who we uh, project not to come during the vaccination for some reason. Um, the strategy for scheduling who goes um, uh, for vaccination on a particular time is also quite tricky because you know you don't want to send all your nurses, all your medical personnel at one time, who if they get 
some um, symptom um, related to the vaccine may not report to work and that par paralyzes the hospital. So um, the micro planning group has, uh, is uh, planning out a, um, a uh, staggered uh, system where in uh, groups are mixed uh, on a particular day so that um, we fairly have a distribution that is um, uh, more widespread among the different work groups in the hospital and we don't lose too many of our uh, medical uh, or clinical personnel at a time. So we have, because we have to ensure continuity of services, PGH is now operating at around 60% of its uh, previous capacity, which is already uh, 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 an achievement by itself, I would say. Um, we're also considering um, do we, uh, scheduling our admin personnel who do not come to work on the weekends at the end of the week so that they have the full weekend to rest just in case there are symptoms. And um, again, to afford a, a, you know, a longer time for our personnel, especially those that go on duty uh, to recover from the vaccination, we prioritize the post-duty personnel during the morning or the afternoon sessions of vaccination. So that gives them 24 hours before their next duty day. So he, well, you have done our vaccine preparation, preparation simulation and we found out that maybe we, with proper technique, we can get as, as much as uh, six doses in, in some of the vials. But of course, they were practicing on, um, on saline solution, the, the viscous, the viscid and um, uh, heavy uh, liquid form of, uh, of the vaccine of Pfizer might make the uh, aspiration more challenging. So you don't get the, um, the six doses that we were able to get with saline solution. So the vaccination is itself, we divided first in, uh, in, the, in the simulation, we broke it down to the screening, the vaccine preparation, the vaccine uh, transport uh, to the vac vaccinator and the vaccination itself. So. This is the uh, documenter, uh, the encoder that uh, does all the paperwork while we free up the vaccinator for the, the vital function that uh, she has to do. So after the vaccination, we also simulated the, uh, a person who uh, complained of an adverse uh, effect. Uh, I think this one is particularly uh, respiratory in nature, maybe an asthma attack because she was complaining of difficulty of breathing. And um, uh, the whole uh, sequence was simulated all the way to bringing her in to the resuscitation area. So, so far we have done that. And, um, and I think um, uh, we're just a few steps away. We, um, we have completed our master list. We have done our pre-registration. Uh, we are going to upload it to the new system, the VIMS IR of uh, the ICT, not DOH anymore. We have done our simulation of delivery, uh, preparation of the vaccine, uh, the actual vaccination and AEFI management, uh, adverse event following immunization. And we have at, at, at last now uh, completed our cold storage capability, ready for any type of vaccine. And Dr. Eva De La Paz has volunteered to use one of her ultra low free freezers in NIH as a backup. Now she'll keep it on uh, in the interim, uh, in the duration the, that the vaccines are here so that we can uh, you know, uh, transfer them uh, if a problem occurs here in PGH. So, um, we were told that the, uh, uh, we have planned uh, since the February 15 actual vaccination is not going to happen. We planned on the, doing the full vaccination stimulation, uh, simulation uh, on February 15, that's on Monday. So um, this is in preparation for the eventual vaccination date, which I think no one knows anymore uh, as of uh, yesterday's uh, Malacanang press uh, conference. So, so uh, but we were told to uh, uh, expect it within February. And we were told also that there are other vaccines coming in in the last week of February. So we might have more options um, as uh, the weeks pass. So I'd like to thank everyone again for uh, this opportunity to share our experience and end with this um, um, favorite cheer of ours in UP as we uh, go to the last phase, the last two minutes 
of this uh, very crucial game uh, against COVID. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much. That was uh, Dr. Gapri Gaspi, the director of the Philippine General Hospital. And I, there's always some, I always have this moment when, when Gap is making a presentation. Gap, thank you so much for all the work you've been doing. Namamaos na, alam kong hindi siya natutulog. Um, but thank you for all the work you're doing for our country, for your leadership. We are just so happy that you are the director of PGH. And the thing about Gap is he's a strategist, but if you ask him to explain the details, he can really show you, and he has it in his head, how it happens up to the last moment of something like a vaccination program. And that is the leadership that we will need everywhere where we vaccinate. There should be a full understanding of how the whole thing will happen. So I just want to thank uh, also the Philippine General Hospital, the team that has prepared this. And I think the operative word is micro planning. Now you could see the level of detail of planning that's going on. Um, the vaccines are not cheap. We don't want to waste them. At the same time, we're dealing with uh, people's anxiety and fear, but looks like PJH is ready. So for those of you who are uh, who just joined us, you can watch this whole presentation on the playback for the other hospitals that are preparing. Um, you can benchmark and take a look also at how you're doing your own preparations. But for me, I felt uh, very reassured that the level of planning is so detailed that this is bound to, to succeed. So uh, we're gonna have reactions from uh, two, more, two more individuals and I know in our audience, a lot of you are in the private sector, you're in private hospitals, and want to get a, a sense also of what's happening in private hospitals. No, so I'm very um, honored to introduce a friend uh, who is um, here with us today. He's also super busy, but uh, let's welcome Dr. Lito Aquin, who is the chief of hospital of the um, Asian Medical Center. Lito, welcome to the webinar. Uy, nawawala ba si Lito, Raymond? <laughs> Doctor, Doctor Aquin, you're on mute, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. we can hear you. And we just want to get a short reaction from you. Yes, a uh, short as... Uh, uh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dito. Go ahead. Um, so thanks for having me. And um, I'd like to echo um, uh, what uh, Dr. Susi said. And that's something that I think should really be um, emphasized in this exercise. Um, and that is, you, need, you cannot be too detailed. Every detail counts. And uh, you're only as good as the level of detail in planning and in execution that... Uh, <laughs> you can uh, master in this exercise. Um, uh, Dr. Gap actually um, took us through the entire process and the, the kind of um, preparation that's needed. Um, and I'd like to also um, uh, point out, however, that um, as, as he very well pointed out, this requires uh, systems integration. It cannot be people um, in silos acting independently. All, everyone has to be on the same page and uh, in the, driven with the same deliverables and the same metrics on a day-to-day -day basis. Kita nyo naman kung paano niya in specify kung ilan yung mga dapat bakunahan, uh, gaano kadalas, ang, uh, ang, um, gaano katagal ang bawat step. Um, and that's very important. Uh, simulation is uh, very important. Uh, I would you know, joint the, the the Asian Hospital is a joint commission uh, international hospital. So, uh, what I can probably contribute um, to this discussion is the concept of risk management and staff safety um, during the simulation. Okay, so it's important then to break down the process into individual steps and think about what are the failure modes for each step. What are the things that can fail or that can go wrong? Um, and then rate them in terms of severity. 
and impact and how probable are those failure modes going to happen uh, for instance since in sinabi ni ni gap na you know the 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 the, the vaccine itself has a, is a, is a very demanding uh, vaccine in terms of technique in terms of allocation in terms of handling storage and so on so that in itself is a high risk process that demands that every step of handling of the vaccine up to the time that it reaches the patient uh, needs to be planned out. And the highest risk um, step there, whether it is in the drawing out of the, of the vaccine because it's oily, or it is in the, the way the vaccine is stored, those things need to be uh, managed in terms of risk. Paano pag kunyari, nawala ng ilaw, nawala ng kuryente, and that's very famous in Manila. So what happens to the minus 70 now? Okay, nabuti na lang, uh, evacuation ko says, I have a backup. Kaya lang, hindi ko na kung pareho ng power grid ang PGH at saka yung NIH. Kasi pag nawala ng kuryente yung PGH, baka NIH din gap. So therefore, baka kailangan kayong um, humanap pa na iba na wala sa power grid. Um, the vaccine can only um, tolerate so much uh, refrigeration. Uh, the other thing also is that when, when uh, Eva promised uh, her minus 70, uh, the presumption there is that she will remove all the specimens there, all the biologicals there, kasi ayon ng DOH na may ibang kasama yung vaccine. And then she, had, she has to decontaminate it. So in the sense, uh, when, when she promised that um, she, GAP can have the minus 70 freezer as a backup, Eva is actually promising on that week, I will remove all the biologicals there. I will decontaminate it and will not put anything there for the duration of the vaccination. That's the kind of um, uh, preparation, I guess, that's, a, that's important here. And that has to be part of the simulation as well. Um, the other thing that I'd like to contribute is the, the notion of staff safety. Um, it's good to have a fiesta atmosphere and everybody wants to have a reunion. Um, but the thing is that uh, we need to maintain still the, the minimum standards of um, of safety even during vaccination. And here we have the risk of people actually, you know, um, lacking so um, distancing, physical distancing. So our our insight here in Asian hospital, and this is also with um, uh, talking to the LGU, our LGU partner is uh, Muntinlupa. And uh, we actually, actually offered to them also our minus 70 freezer. Our insight here was that what you can do ahead of time, you do it now. Um, huwag na kayo maghintay na nakukumpulan yung mga tao during vaccination day. So master listing, uh, education, counseling, screening can be done ahead of time. It's only the actual assessment that's needed. Remember, the only ones that are, uh, that you, that are not qualified are children less than 16 years old and those with allergies to polyethylene glycol or, any, uh, or to another vaccine. Um, uh, the rest you can defer, and ang deferment naman is kung buntis ka, if you've had COVID for the past 90 days, um, uh, if you've had convalescent plasma, and, and if you had symptoms. And if your hospital already has an effective way of screening out uh, staff coming in with symptoms or with exposure, wala na sila agad ng vaccination day na yun. And then you can already also advise uh, those who had COVID ahead of time, wag na kayong pumila sa baba. Kasi hindi naman kayo mababakunahan eh. Madi-defer kayo until 90 days after your um, COVID uh, um, uh, infection. And of course, yung mga kailangan ng clearance, hindi na kailangan pumili sa baba, di ba? Kasi ito yung may HIV, may autoimmune, transplant, uh, transplantees, uh, cancer patients. Automatically, that can be also uh, segregated from the rest. So you're actually protecting the vulnerables from going down and, uh, uh, and lining up with uh, the rest of the uh, healthier staff who are actually willing to be vaccinated. So that kind of um, 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 thinking, I think it's important because all the time we need to protect our staff even as we try to give them the best um, benefit from vaccination. Uh, I think that I promise to be brief and so, um, those are my uh, comments. I hope they're useful to GAP and to others as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Dr. Dito Aquin, the chief of the Asian Medical Center. And I think, you know, those are very, very, very uh, sharp insights also, Dito. No? Na we have to really think about whole systems, you know? 
it it does it's not as simple as it seems i mean it is straightforward but as you said no, the level of detail is so important and i think you made a very good point around um backup systems which is really how we should be operating in 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 a time like this because there are so many variables that cannot be cannot be controlled okay so we're going to i'm going to turn over to raymond to introduce our next speaker thanks lito Thank you, Dr. Aquin, and thank you, Dr. Susi. Uh, welcome. It's, it's my pleasure and honor po, uh, to introduce. Uh, she is the City Health Officer for Navota City. She is also, I believe, the immediate past president of the Philippine Obstetrics and Gynecology Society, our newly recognized po, uh, most outstanding physician from the Philippine Medical Association, Dr. Christian Padolina, to talk more about the LGU preparations. Dr. Padolina, go yes, ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, could I have the slides from your tech team? And I'd like to congratulate Dr. Gatli Gaspi for a brilliant presentation. And uh, let me showcase the topic, which is how will health workers be vaccinated against COVID-19? Uniquely, as I am also the medical director of the Navata City Hospital and City Health Officer, our approach is more on a citywide basis. But I think Dr. Gapli Gaspi will have his hands full in as much as the other LGUs would be networking with him if and when needed for this particular project. This particular project, you cannot be over-prepared you need to over prepare for this one as the vaccine is treated as if it is gold. So could I have the next slide to showcase the simulation that has been done in the city of the Botas? And that simulation is being done so that we are able to have vaccine confidence. Thank you. So please.
Okay, so that's in a nutshell, uh, the video was made essentially for two things, and that is to ensure one, training for our staff, and two, also to ensure that we have increased the COVID vaccination uh, confidence within the community. So as clear messaging, um, we also invoke the utilization of our staff or our community members who went abroad and were given vaccination. So I think that's the next slide. Yeah, okay. Magandang umaga po. Uh, ako po si Romel Reyes. Uh, laking nabotas po ako. Ngayon po dito na ako nakatira sa Seattle, Washington. Uh, Frontline worker po ako. Kaya um, meron na po akong bakuna for COVID. Pangalawang dose ko na po uh, two weeks ago. Um, gusto ko po kayong i-encourage na magpabakuna dahil safe po. Um, medyo may sakit ng katawan the first 24 to 36 hours. Tsaka sakit ng ulo yung lang naramdaman ko sa side effect. Uh, at safe po uh, sa dami po ng, ng benefits. Eh, kailangan po natin para matalo ma na po natin itong virus na to. Okay, so in as much as uh, our focus for this morning, this afternoon, I should say, would be the uh, um, resolution on the vaccination priority listing, it is very important for us to adopt as a community that uh, we should be able to address the right frontliners. So as to the first question, who are the frontliners? we included everyone in the private and public health sector, which means that even the outsource, um, maintenance staff, dietary section, the BHW manning the isolation facility, everyone was listed. We used the QR coding and in terms of clear messaging, we should always use the tandem for master listing and that of risk communication. Our vaccine confidence has increased from the month of December up until now. We made a community-wide survey wherein we proposed to the community whether they want uh, yes to the vaccine, no to the vaccine, yes, but with a particular brand. Because this was our mantra in terms of choosing which vaccine to get for our community. So allow me the last three, message, three minutes for messaging. Number one, Open communication is very important to ensure that we establish vaccine confidence. We went through the motion of getting an or and organizing our team so that right now we have a micro planning document. But what I think is very important here is during the actual vaccination itself, 
we should now be very prepared. So we have two ultra low freezers. We have the whole range so that at any time that the OH says we have vaccines, we're ready to receive them. We ensured that we have a generator for that. We also called up Miralco to ensure a steady supply of uh, electricity. And we also ensured that uh, we get volunteers so that uh, we invoke also patient safety so that the vaccinating team only attends to the vaccination itself. We, these are the school teachers for counselors, et cetera. And I think what is very important here, aside from risk management, from ensuring that we have the necessary logistics, we have the team ready, we have the enthusiastic medical healthcare workers that are paving the way for all of this, is to get champions from the healthcare workers. Because if the community sees that it is the healthcare workers who are leading the way, because we were the ones who were um, very much affected during the onset of uh, COVID, then we could invite everybody to come in. And we do not, uh, uh, we over, I would like to overemphasize the role of leadership. If the leaders would be able to clearly show the direction, then we, the half, half of the battle is already won in as much as the whole population, the whole staff, would be one collectively in the direction of having the vaccine. And may I also thank the experts, the academic institutions who are giving their time and effort so that they are able to convince the community that really this is the way to go. Ika nga, ang tagal natin hinintay ang bakuna. Ito yung laban ng bayan. So thank you po. We thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Cristia Padolina Navotas. And um, again, another, <laughs> having another moment when you watch this video and you see the level of preparation happening at the local government. Um, I think uh, it's, it's heartwarming. And um, I do wish you all the success in your vaccination program. We're going into a uh, panel discussion right now. So I'd like to call everyone uh, into the panel, uh, Dr. Gapri Gaspi, Dr. Ted Rabosa, uh, Dr. Lito Aquin, Dr. Fadolina and um, Raymond. And let's see if we can get everyone up. Okay. Let's call on Dr. Jonas Del Rosario also. Okay, Jonas Del Rosario. And I think, I don't know, do we have Gap? Director Gap, can you hear us? Okay, let's. Uh, okay, so uh, let me introduce Jonas Del Rosario, spokesperson of um, Philippine General Hospital, uh, hoping that Dr. Ligaspi will also be able to to join us. Okay, so um, let me ask the first question for the panel. Uh, let's just try to imagine that um, you know that uh, tomorrow, for example. The vaccines will arrive. What would be, what would be the thing that will keep you up the night before? So let's uh, let's go to Ted first. Because <laughs> Ted, at the national, you're looking at the national scene. Pag nagroll out yan, ano ba yung? So, so in short, I'm trying to what I'm trying to extract is there is a good level of preparation. There's micro planning, but something could happen, right? And I know that. Especially you, Ted, you're an emergency yep. emergency from a guy, right? You'd think of these things. What would keep you up the night before? Okay. Well, before I answer that, I'd like to thank Dr. Padilina for obliging us and showing us the micro planning they did at the LGU level. Of course, also me to Aquin, my brother, and uh, and Gap's uh, detailed uh, planning together with all his staff. You know, uh, I'm a disaster medicine expert and. <laughs> Planning is key, and if I if if only when I was undersecretary and the way we did expanded program of immunization was anywhere close to the planning of this, you know, Susie, the vaccinations there was parang palengke and gulugulo nakapila yung mga bata nagiiyakan, di ba? Nagkakahawahan. <laughs> so, but you saw the how organized it is, the use of technology, the use of what? You know? So, I think when you do planning, you minimize risk, and that I think is the the one that will keep me thinking. Did I forget anything? Did I forget 
uh, any risk that I did not prepare for. So that's the difficulty. Uh, even Pfizer says uh, in their product label, according to Eric Domingo, is that the Pfizer vaccine needs to be given in a hospital setting. So they mm -hmm. themselves recognize that anaphylactic shock, anaphylactic reactions, severe allergic reactions are the primary uh, risks that one would look at. And uh, I wouldn't want that happening on day one with all the spotlight on media. I knew that I know that will happen, but it, I hopefully it will not happen when under the, uh, you know, the lights of the stage during day one. So that's the one that will worry me. And if it does happen, I just wish, wish that the team, the emergency medicine team are truly prepared. I also wish that they will, uh, it's not a bad outcome and that the resuscitation will be properly done and uh, the patient will be safe and the adverse event will be handled uh, properly. So that's always the, I call that the what if uh, in, a, in, in emergency med and disaster med, we call it the worst case scenario or the Murphy's law. If anything can go wrong, it will. <laughs> ang, ang sabi ka sa akin ni Secretary Galvez, alam mo, natuturuan ako ng military guy. Eh. Sabi niya ganun sa akin, Ted, the first casualty in battle is the plan. <laughs> so technically, that's that, that, I've learned that from the general, my boss, right now. So that, yes. that's it. it. You know, just make hoping that the plan will go as yeah. planned. Nice, nice, nice insight, Ted. Um, I don't know, Gap, can you hear us? Okay, wala yatang audio si Gap eh. So let's go to Lito Aquin first. Lito, what do you think? You're rolling uh, out the roll. This is the night before. What do you think you'll be thinking about? Well, <clears throat> I'll be thinking about the people who will do the worrying for me. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Sana hindi Good sila, one. Sana maka, makatulog sila ng mabuti. Kasi sa totoo naman, pag meron kang mabubuting tao, magma-manage ng entire process, um, you can sleep well. Because um, it's actually when you only, only when you fail to plan, are you planning to fail. But if you are able to test it and retest it, um, and, and uh, be sure that you work with the local government in our case, because we are a private hospital. And mm -hmm. therefore, um, nothing we do uh, is going to amount to a lot, especially in these times unless we partner with the local government. And uh, we, there, there was a clear um, plan uh, for Mutinlupa in which we are a part of. We know that we are a part of a system in Mutinlupa. And we know that anytime that the vaccine comes, the first people who will be alerted will, be, will include us. Of course, it will also include the Hospital of Mutinlupa and RITM. So we are a small, a uh, bunch of hospitals there situated sure. close to each other. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's, that's how we, we communicate with each other. So um, it's important to uh, think of yourself as a member of a team. So you don't do all the worrying yourself. You pass it on, huh? <laughs> okay, you thanks. Worry as a team. <laughs> Thank you for that very candid, uh, candid reaction. Okay, I can see Gap. 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 Okay, Gap, thank you so much for your presentation. We really enjoyed it so much. Uh, no, enjoy is not the word. We really appreciated it and the level of detail that you went into. So my question was, uh, hypothetically, if your vaccination rolls out tomorrow, this yeah. is the night before, what, you, what would you be concerned about? What would keep you up thinking? Uh, the uh, Gap, Gap, can you take out your mask? Can you remove your mask for a few minutes? You know, uh, what is really uncontrolled, I think, uh, with, with, with people who really bounce. That is one of my biggest goals. We care so much for the people who are opportunity. Oh, 
Okay, Raymond, did you pick that up? Because I could barely hear it. No, uh, just some of it, not all of it, Dr. Susie. I think he, he's, he's just uh, emphasizing in terms of the preparations uh, and really just uh, it's, uh, it's essentially very, very similar to how Dr. Akuin phrased it uh, in that uh, it's really a total team effort. There were some bits and pieces that I was unable to uh, figure out. Maybe Dr. Jonas can uh, fill in the gaps. Dr. Jonas, okay. what would keep you up at night if it were you in Dr. Gap's shoes? Try to second guess your boss. <laughs> Dr. Jonas, you're on mute. So yung unang baba ko nahan eh. <laughs> um, <laughs> kaya, dyan, the night before. Wait, wait, wait. I want to introduce Jonas. Jonas Del Rosario is the spokesperson of the Philippine General Hospital. And is that true, Ted, that he's going to be the first one to be vaccinated? Jonas, Jonas lost his two parents. He was taking care of his two parents during the height of the COVID pandemic. He lost his mother, I think, first, and then his uh, father, father, or vice versa. And he also got COVID. He was in the ICU. I think I think he underwent all the, the bad procedures. And all of us were scared for him. So this is a new hope that he will be the story that, uh, you know, like the country, you know, crum cr uh, crumbling in its knees in economics. We hope that Jonas will portray that story that, uh, yes, we have the vaccine and it's going to protect the people. Jonas. Jonas, Jonas go ahead. What do you uh, okay, think? first of all, uh, second, second guessing my boss, Gap, I'm sure he probably will not sleep. Uh, he'll probably uh, be in PGH uh, first thing in the morning, baka maaga pa, no? but uh, we'll go through again with the plans and uh, making sure that, uh, uh, just like what uh, Dr. Aquin said, uh, areas that uh, failure might happen will be rechecked and over and over again. The, the team will be there. The, his, uh, his generals will be there uh, the eve of the event. And then uh, I think the next, the next big headache is making sure we have good crowd control, the, um, as how we practice it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit wild and uh, challenging because, as you know, PGH was, uh, was advertised to be the first institution. And, and mind you, I have been getting so many requests from the media, they want to cover everything uh, from the smallest of detail. And we have to, uh, unfortunately, we have to control them and make sure that we only have, uh, we still have to practice physical distancing. And then I think the next uh, issue is uh, making sure that the vaccine is handled very well. Uh, the actual uh, unpacking, uh, transferring of the vaccine until to the place that we're going to to inoculate the vaccinees. And then the next step, really, the other concern will be the monitoring for any adverse event because uh, everybody will be watching uh, for this. In fact, this is one of the main reasons why a lot of people are hesitant to get the vaccine. People say that uh, the clinical trial is not yet over. The, the data is only um, uh, very limited, short-term outcome. And so... Uh, what we will be experiencing as the initial uh, vaccinees or recipients of this vaccine will mean a lot to, to the rest of the, uh, to the community. Uh, on a personal note, um, yes, I was, first of all, I did not volunteer to get the, uh, the vaccine to be the first one. Uh, actually, I was having uh, uh, second thoughts in a way, not because I don't want to get the vaccine. I want to, to get it. Uh, I asked the experts, I read the literature that uh, there's no guarantee for someone who had COVID that that person will be permanently immunized. And so uh, the data is still out as how long that one person can, can have this immunity. In fact, I was asking my director, Gap, I said, Gap, baka naman dapat sa iba muna mauna at uh, baka isipin nila ba't mo ibibigay sa akin dahil... Uh, in some ways, I have some form of immunity already. I have antibodies. I uh, donated my plasma. And so I don't really mind to be uh, put uh, towards the end. Or, you know, uh, if I could, I can offer my dose to somebody else who is not immunized. Um, my uh, gap sort of like told me in some ways that uh, I think it will be the reason maybe why and he probably has to say something about it. Uh, one of the reasons why they, they asked me to be one of the first is uh, 
to uh, probably put some credibility and uh, give some confidence to others. And the fact that even if you are, uh, if you had COVID in the past, you're still not fully protected, at least from what we know. Yeah, thank you very much, Jonas. I think at some point, we'll want you to tell your story. I think uh, it's not been difficult. It's not, it's not been easy for you. It's been difficult. And uh, we're just grateful you're alive, you're back, you're with us. And um, I hope you get that first vaccine. That's great. Okay, uh, Dr. Padalina, um, if you're rolling out tomorrow, what do you think you'll be thinking about the night before? I sincerely think that we could only plan and anticipate problems so much. But the night before, it's time to be with your team assure them that uh, we should be anticipating and having adjustments as needed. I think that should be crucial, that they will feel your presence and that uh, you are able to assemble the whole team so that the rollout would be better. If there would be problems, problems will come in. But as if you are prepared to answer them, then that's the, and respond to them properly. I think that's best. Okay, thank you very much. I think at this point, we're going to uh, show our panelists the results of our uh, opinion poll and also the profiling of our audience. So, uh, Raymond, do you want to walk through this? Just so, okay. just so our speakers know who's in the audience. Go ahead. That's true. That's true. Thank you, Dr. Susie. Uh, before we continue on with our panel discussion, um, we'd just like to acknowledge those who have been able to answer our our. Poll questions, uh, just an audience survey, nearly half, 48% po, uh, coming from Metro Manila. Next up is from Northern and Southern Luzon, and the third one from Central Luzon. The least po that we are seeing are those who are joining us from Western and Central Mindanao. Uh, there are also from Southern Mindanao, Northern Eastern Mindanao, and outside of the Philippines. Probably we need to... Uh, be more creative in terms of uh, promoting in those areas. Po. Um, in the second question, what is your line of work? We have mostly um, 39%, mostly uh, nursing po and uh, medicine folks. So those really comprise uh, majority of folks who are on the call. But I'm really curious about these others because they comprise 15% of our uh, attendee composition. So it would be nice if we could tease that out. The third question, who are considered health workers? So um, 83% or 1,258 of those who answered answered all of the above. Uh, mamaya po ay sasagutan po yung ating, ating resource uh, speakers. Number four, how will the vaccinations be paid for? 58% answered again, all of the above. And then number five, what are the steps to take for health workers to be vaccinated for COVID-19? 84% answered also all of the above. So let's continue on po, with our panel discussion. Um, did you have any questions, Dr. Susie, or do you want to do our new um, setup uh, wherein we ask yeah, people I have questions? I one more question before, before we proceed, because I think that question about Who's paying for the vaccines is a very important one. So let's uh, let's ask uh, let's go reverse. Let's ask uh, Dr. Christia. Um, yes. How, who's paying for the vaccines for Nabotas? The city of Nabotas entered uh, on the tripartite agreement with the national government and the uh, local government, and this is the way to go in terms of the emergency utilization authority. So. We ensured that we use that route so that we will be able to provide the right number of vaccines to our um, patients. And um, with regards to the other agencies, the national government based on the mayor, based on the discussion of the mayor with IATF, they already indicated that they cannot fully, sub fully support this one. So it has to be subsidized also by the LGU. So there is a co-payment coming from the LGU on this one. And uh, in the plan, so one of our questions in the poll was who's covered uh, for this first round of health workers? So uh, frontliners, it include, does it include administrative staff in the hospital, maintenance, drivers, barangay Definitely. health workers? Definitely. Everyone, 
even on the public sector, I mean, it, we were ahead of it in terms of having a already a computerized form for all our healthcare workers. So it included even the VHW, the nutritionist, the um, even the uh, outsourced uh, maintenance personnel, the pharmacist on a private sector, even the hygienists were included. So we counted them in as part of the frontliners. I think that's best because at some point in time, they are also volunteers for our vaccination program as either counselors or other roles so that our limited number of staff, medical and paramedical, would just be attuned to the vaccination process itself. Okay, um, John Nash, do you wanna answer the question for, for PGH on uh, you know who's paying for it? Well, PGH is getting the, uh, you know, there, there, uh, there are 109 doses from COVAX. I think that's from the WHO. And uh, so we're getting it for free. So I don't know how, uh, I'm not so uh, knowledgeable on how that will be on how it was arranged uh, with WHO. It was probably with the government. Um, so as far as uh, PGH, uh, we're not spending anything from, uh, it's not going to be coming from the UP system or uh, from the funds of PGH. Okay. Lito, how about you? How, how is it going to work for the private sector? Well, um, the, as, as I said, we were in partnership with the um, um, local government of Puntilupa. And basically, the local government um, is getting the government uh, procured vaccines uh, within the next few months. Um, however, I am aware that there are many, um, there are several other um, players, uh, several other business groups that have pulled together resources to uh, also get other vaccines, such as Moderna and Novavax. Uh, so if push comes to shove, and um, um, uh, na, the, because the healthcare workers are the top line priority, yun. and then there are other priorities after that, including the vulnerable population, and that's where uh, the um, private public partnerships are going to come in through tripartite and quadripartite agreements to make sure that uh, the vaccines are procured and administered, of course, according to government um, guidelines. Uh, that's what I know. But the first um, tranche right now, the vaccines, uh, we were told will be coming from government uh, procurement uh, period. Thank you very much, Lito. Ted, did you want to add yeah. something? Yes, I, I, I'd like to add that uh, for 2021, the whole government allocated 70 billion pesos for vaccines procurement. So we, we've decided to get a portfolio of vaccines. And, uh, of the, uh, and then a remaining 12 billion for uh, implementation for yeah. really deployment, uh, all the paraphernalia, all the syringes, or even the new storage freezers that have to be bought, uh, engagement with uh, uh, logistics and supply companies, end-to-end uh, -end pharma. So, so it's a total of 82.5 billion in the 2021 budget in the GAA. So that's good. The, the 70 billion is good for 70 million Filipinos. Why 70 million? We need to subtract the people below 18. So we're about 110 million. If you subtract, there's about 25% of the population, which is below the age of 18. So they won't be vaccinated because none of the vaccines are still proven in that sector. They were not studied. Most of the studies were for the adult. And then for the elderly, we also have to separate the very old. Some countries have limited their age groups from initially 80. Now they're bringing it down to 60, 65. So that other 5, 10% will be removed. So uh, the remaining uh, eligible population is about 70 million. So we will be good to be able to vaccinate about 50 million. If we're able to do that, uh, that, that would uh, take care of uh, uh, the, the candidate vaccines. Now, the nice thing, as was, was mentioned, was that the LGUs, there are about 39 LGUs that have contributed money to also buy uh, vaccines. So they've signed up uh, what is called a tripartite agreement with the national government because the EUA does not allow the vaccine company to sell it commercially. They have to sell to the national government. 
So that's the other that's the other source. And then the first tripartite was actually with private sector, the Go Negotio Group, which signed up for I think already 2.5 million doses of AstraZeneca. And the other group, uh, Mr. Razon, is the one leading the the push for Moderna. So that's also a tripartite agreement. So we've actually overordered already. If you count all of these vaccines, we actually have more vaccines that are committed than ordered. The problem is when they will arrive. Yes. So COVAX is not free. Uh, contrary to everybody, the Philippines contributed $84 million to the COVAX fund. I think, I think it's dependent on your economic level because we're a middle-income country. We were required to pay $84 million, but the amount we were getting is about 117,000 doses of Pfizer and 5 million doses. I think they're good for... 44 million doses of vaccines, 20% of the population. So, so as you can see, if you count all of this, parang sobra na talaga yung in order natin. But that's the fight. Eh? That's the global fight for, for the supply. The, the key problem is when they will arrive. So COVAX hit us by storm that it will come in February. That's why all this micro planning had to be done hurriedly. But next month, I think the Chinese vaccines are also coming. So, so I think that was announced 600,000 doses of Chinese vaccines. Sinovac will also arrive. So that will be available as well. I think the president ordered that for the military uh, and also the health workers, if they're willing to have that. And then I think by, by April is Novavax, which is, I think, about 30 million. But 30 million will not come at a time. They will come in tranches. So I and then uh, by July is Astra, the one with the tripartite, and then later in the year I think J Johnson and Johnson is also committed. So we will have uh, very heavy vaccinations by the latter quarter of this year, which is sometime in October to December, and uh, then we will continue to vaccinate because as the deliveries come, padami ng padami yan, and uh, I do hope the people can sustain the vaccination program. I think. I think uh, you know we, we looked at GAP's presentation and you could see the level of detail needed for six thousand people. Yes. In a hospital that's very orderly. So once you start thinking about seventy million people who are going to be vaccinated, the level of micro planning is unimaginable. So at some point, I'm just going to give a little teaser for our audience. At some point, we're going to talk about you know benefits of healthcare workers. Are they being paid enough? Should they be paid more for all of this work that's going to be done? So, teaser lang po sa inyo yan ngayon, no? All right, so uh, let me turn over to Raymond. I think we have someone in the audience who we're going to put on cam. Go ahead, Raymond. Thank you so much, Dr. Susie. So may we call on Miss uh, what's her name? Bianca Dava. She is, let me just get the name. Um, she will be switching on her audio and video um, I think she's from um, <clears throat> from ABS CBN, if I'm not mistaken. Or uh, but please go ahead. Yeah, yes, from ABS. Hi, 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 Doc. hi everyone. Yes, I'm Bianca Dava from ABS CBN. So I just want to ask you, Ms. Actually, in general hospital, po, no? um, how is PGH preparing for to prevent the wastage of vaccines, for instance? Substitute list ready, and how many percent of the vaccines will be listed as substitutes per day? And a question: During the simulation exercise yesterday, um, what were the challenges encountered? Kung meron man po, and what needs to be improved po in the hospital's vaccination process? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's give that to Jonas. Jonas, go ahead. Uh, is Gap around? Does mm -hmm. he want to answer? Um, um, I, I'm not seeing him. I'm not seeing him, uh, Doctor Jones. All right. Uh, All right. So, so the the just to, to answer the question. Gap, Gap, do you want to answer? No. Sorry, I didn't get that. I just hooked on again. I, the uh, signal was really very bad. Hi. Hi, Dr. Legaspi. Opo, um, yung sa unang question ko po on how is uh, PGH preparing po no, to prevent the wastage of vaccines? Um, for instance, meron po bang um, substitute list ready or gagawa po ba ng substitute list? And how many percent po of the vaccines will be listed as substitutes per day? So there are many ways to save on the, uh, on the uh, vaccine. No? One is, of course, the proper handling of it. 
uh, when we were doing our uh, when we were doing our uh, simulation of the vaccine preparation and uh, inoculation, apparently if you do it very well, you can you can do six uh, um, 0.3 mL um, uh, doses. Uh, in contrast to the five that was uh, initially uh, instructed mm -hmm. to us, so we'll, we don't know if we can do that with the real vaccine because the real the vaccine is more viscous and uh, maybe harder to aspirate. But we intend to find out with the real vaccine if we can really go up to six. No? So we use more of of the uh, 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 vial allotted to us. No? Secondly, we purposely uh, overbook like Cebu Pacific twenty percent. 30% of our uh, uh, staff, uh, we were initially given a baseline uh, allocation of 4,376, but we're trying to get more. So we overbooked our uh, uh, registration just in uh, as predicted by DOH, sometimes 20% do not come. So I think uh, that's one way that we have a uh, quick standby line called the QSL. So they come in anytime. Uh, we even included our uh, retirees uh, or and, and our professor emeriti, who we hope will have a chance also uh, as a, on the quick standby line. But the instructions of DOH and WHO is that we uh, prioritize the uh, direct uh, care, healthcare workers. So, so we have a quick standby line and we have our uh, 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 aspiration technique that we hope uh, will make us uh, allow us to get more from the vial. Okay, thank you, Gap. Uh, Bianca, you had a second question, right? Yes, po, yes, po. Um, doc, on one day, we're gonna have yung mas malaking dry run po, no? But then, during the simulation exercise po yesterday, um, assessment na lang po, no, uh, where there are challenges encountered and uh, ano po yung mga kailangan ni improve po sa vaccination process ng hospital if there's any. Okay. So we, uh, what we did yesterday is we broke down the steps. No, we did not do the complete uh, uh, process as a whole, uh, uh, as one fluid uh, motion. We broke it down to uh, the screening, uh, to the vaccine preparation, to the inoculation, and then of course the, man the monitoring after. Uh, we found out that the uh, possible bottlenecks will be in the screening because uh, uh, we st you still ask a lot of questions in terms of the uh, current health condition of the patient. No? So more, uh, of course, you have to take the blood pressure and the temperature as well, and the consent. No? And uh, the forms uh, look quite uh, uh, complex uh, in terms of if for a mass uh, vaccination. Uh, the easiest parts actually were uh, the easiest part actually was uh, uh, the. Uh, uh, inoculation. It was the fastest, no. Uh, and uh, I think the other bot bottleneck will be in the monitoring. When uh, if the inoculation goes really fast, then that means there will be more people in the uh, uh, monitoring area. So we are we have prepared a uh, an a uh, a uh, an uh, upscaling, no? an upscaling of the monitoring unit uh, in the corridors nearby. So the uh, I think. Uh, based on our dry, uh, run yesterday, um, uh, it, we also will think, I think it will make, take some time for our uh, uh, pharmacists to have some, some confidence in handling that. It's like, it's like a very delicate uh, uh, mat porcelain material that they're handling uh, because the uh, uh, vaccine is, uh, is sensitive to vibration and uh, and of course, now we find out it's also sensitive to heat, no? So <clears throat> I think the upper range of temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. We haven't checked the temperature in our open area. And of course, we'd like to make sure that uh, the vaccine is in ideal condition. So tomorrow, uh, we will also do uh, spot checks of temperatures uh, where we uh, handle the vaccine. Thank you very much, Gap. Uh, I think, uh, Raymond, we have one more person from the audience who's going to ask a question. Raymond, go ahead. Yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. Um, I think she already has her camera on. The name po is Maria Rowena Raimundo. Ma'am, go ahead, Paul, with your question, Paul. Uh, yes, thank you. This is uh, Doc Gwen Raimundo from Laguna. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting this. 
um, the, the context of my question is, uh, is that most of the discussion has been uh, about the deployment of the vaccine in healthcare workers who are in part of institutions who have uh, this is a system for procuring and ruling out the vaccines. So I'm asking this question on behalf of all the other healthcare workers who do not have access to these uh, organizations or institutions, for instance, uh, the private nurses or probably uh, private practitioners or doctors who, who are in their clinics. My question is, is there a system in place to ensure that these healthcare workers get on any master list? And if so, um, what, can, what, do, what are we going to do to ensure that they know what to do? Thank you. Great question. Thank you. Gap, go. Um, I was in a meeting this morning with the uh, uh, 119 uh, facil uh, healthcare facilities, and that was a question exactly of one of the uh, participants. And I think in the uh, rolling out of the vaccine, uh, uh, non-hospital-based healthcare workers come, unfortunately, after the LGUs. No, uh, so it's it's going to be probably uh, four, four or five steps. Uh, from the uh, initial uh, deployment, but the, but they were telling us, you know, it's only like this now because there are 117,000 uh, doses coming in. But if nine million come in, it will cover for all the healthcare workers, uh, whether uh, hospital based or not. Uh, eventually, you know, I think uh, the government uh, in the report this morning, they're quite confident that uh, within the next <clears throat> two to three months the uh, other millions that they're waiting for are going to come. So, and in that case, uh, we don't need, even need to line up anymore. That's, uh, that's the point this morning. So, unfortunately, in this initial phase, uh, yeah, the, even uh, you know, uh, hospitals that are uh, also laid, heavily laden with the, loaded with the uh, COVID patients uh, were, were not put in the priority list because of the size of the hospital or the number of patients they see. You know? so, so the prioritization had, had a system that they had to in, uh, implement so that the uh, effect on the uh, uh, major hospitals handling COVID uh, is felt even better. So I think for the uh, message this morning is that we should not worry because millions will come. And I, and I think uh, they, they do, uh, they will in the next few months. Okay, thank may you very I, much. May I answer much. that? I, I have yeah. a brief answer there. Um, you need to work with the LGUs. And if there, are, um, if there are small clinics where you are affiliated, because I am affiliated with a small clinic as well in Las Piñas, they are also asked by the LGU to contribute to the master list. Unless you're a real freelancer, like a PT, for instance, or a private duty nurse, then maybe your, uh, your company or even you yourself can contact the um, um, LG officials. And that's really the city health office here, or the one in charge of the, of the vaccine rollout program for the city or for the municipality. I think that's the way now because um, that's a real gap in the, in the delivery system of uh, vaccination right now. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Lito. I think uh, Dr. Padolina wants to share the Navotas experience, and Ted also wants to say something. So, Christia, please go ahead. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, the LGUs were mandated by DOH to register the private sector healthcare providers. So, we have a COVAX. Uh, I mean, any LGU, I think, would have an electronic uh, system that you could enroll yourself, cross-validated and course through, the city health officer. And uh, what basically we did is everybody in Abotas who is in the private sector, either with a standalone clinic or practicing elsewhere, but they decide that they want to have the vaccination in Abotas, they could have it there and have self-registered. So walang iwanan, everybody gets in. Great. Ted, what did you want? You, Ted, you wanted to say something, no? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, um, all of these, uh, Vac uh, vaccination priorities are covered by the agreements, by the tripartite agreements with the LGU. So the health workers need to be prioritized. So if you are not in the DOH hospital, university hospital, public local hospital, uh, the, the, the private hospitals, you have to be listed in the LGU. 
and the LGUs have already stated that even their workplace, so it may be either the LGU of your residence or the LGU of your workplace can uh, register you. Wag naman siguro dalawa because once, either way, you'll, you'll have to be given. So, And then the requirement of COVAX is that their donation is actually prioritized for the Filipino health workers. So they're watching us because for the first tranche, which is the 117,000 doses of Pfizer and the 5 million doses of, uh, of uh, Astra, so they'll be remaining another uh, 35 million doses. So I think everybody needs to be covered. If you want to be vaccinated, get registered in the LGU. Or if you're working in a private company, some of the private companies are getting their own. And they've also been asked to prioritize the health workers in their company. So the key is getting engaged and getting registered in the master list. Okay, thank you very much, Ted. I think that's very informative. As you can see in the chat box, people are very appreciative of, of this information. You know, I'm mindful of the time. We're close to the top of the hour and I think we're going to run our evaluation poll. So Raymond, take it away. Thank you for the excellent insights from our panelists. Um, for those who are joining us for the very first time, this is just an evaluation on well the the um the delivery, the content, and how much you learn from the webinar. I'll just read off the list, and I hope uh, those who are still with us, uh, numbering over two thousand two hundred, to uh, I enjoin them to answer this uh, assessment poll. Number one, the panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. Number two, the panelists were well prepared and organized. Number three, panelists spoke clearly and audibly. Number four, used appropriate language with technical medical jargons adequately explained. And number five, the panelists contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing key COVID-19 health issues. Uh, at this point, uh, I, I will not uh, turn off the poll post, so please continue on to input your answers, but uh, Dr. Susie will now get the final messages from each of our resource speakers. Okay, so uh, I'm going to ask everyone to just say a few words before we close. So we'll start with, with Gap, Dr. Legaspi. Yeah, um, well, I think the message is that finally we're at that stage that we're all waiting for. Uh, we waited for this day when uh, the final blow, so to speak, to the uh, to this uh, crisis is uh, given and hopefully uh, uh, ushers in the ending. Uh, we've been waiting a, a long time uh, for this. Uh, it's been 11 months, it's, it's been too long. So I think uh, being prepared is the least that we can do. Uh, being hopeful is, is probably what we should all do. Uh, we, we, uh, we have this opportunity uh, to uh, show everyone uh, that um, uh, the vaccine can truly be useful as it can only be as useful as we want it to be. You know? So the message really is: uh, let's all give it a try. Uh, we are happy that in in our hospital the uh, acceptance rate has actually increased in the last few days that we've been doing our registration. So uh, it's a good sign, and I I hope uh, it ushers in a, a even better uh, uh, control of this uh, problem for us. So again, thank you very much for uh, having me here again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gab. Thank you for your time and for your excellent presentation. Um, Lito. Yes, um, um, I, I agree with, with Gab. Um, this is a hopeful time, but I think that that hope has to be shared by everyone. Vaccine hesitancy is still very much a significant problem. And the only people who are most qualified and who are most recognized to persuade and to be credible champions of uh, vaccination are the doctors and other healthcare workers. So I'd like to enjoin everyone not only to be vaccinated, but also to communicate in transparent and honest and timely ways and in sympathetic ways to the rest of our uh, countrymen because this is the time when uh, everybody needs healthcare workers, not just to, um, to care for them, but to convince them that there is in fact a way out of this. So uh, let us be mindful of our responsibility then. 
and to be up to date with all of the things related to vaccination. Thank you. Thank you very much, Slito Aquin of the Asian Medical Center. Okay, we're going to Christia, the uh, health officer of Novotas. Yes, um, um, thank you, Dr. Susi. We're into the home stretch. We need that second wind. I know our frontliners are tired, but uh, we need to do this right and we need to do this together. So it is a timely call for everyone to be responsible and to be mindful with each other. And dito na ang laban ng bayan. So I hope everyone is with us with the right education, right counseling, and right mindset. Let's inspire everyone to do this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Cristia Padulina of, of uh, Navotas, and congratulations on all the work that you're doing. Ted? Yes, Susie. Well, uh, I'd like to look at it from the perspective of public health. And we all know that there are two important things in public health that has saved millions of lives. One is the development of safe drinking water. And the second is the development of vaccines. So I think vaccines that go through the rigorous process are safe. They will be effective and they will save lives. And this message we as health workers need to bring out to all the people. And the other thing I learned when I was under Secretary of Health is vaccines itself do not save lives. It's the vaccination program that saves lives. So the, the minute detail and planning shown to you by Doctors Padolina, Aquin, and Legaspi are the ones that will actually save lives. Making sure that that vaccine is jabbed in the shoulders of all Filipinos. Maraming salamat and pabakuna na tayo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ted Herbosa, Executive Vice President of the University of the Philippines. Okay, so for our closing and synthesis, may I call on uh, Chancellor Menchik Padilla of uh, UP Manila. Chancellor Menchik, go ahead. Okay, so, am I on? Yeah, yes, you're on, Chancellor. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Um, well, our main presenter was uh, PJH Director Gapligaspi, and he shared with the audience the preparations for the vaccine deployment of PJH. The main message uh, we learned from Dr. Gap was plan, plan, plan. Dr. Gap mentioned macro planning with DOH and micro planning internal to PGH. So macro with DOH, micro within PGH. He said that all protocols come from DOH and PGH is following the protocols to the letter. So as he mentioned many times, you know, equally important is a micro planning and he designated Dr. Homerko as a micro planning coordinator to come up with a good but flexible plan. I think the word flexibility is, is very important because anything can go wrong anytime and we may have to change along the way. So adding the word flexible, I think is really good in planning. So he showed the various sub teams that were created to support the planning of the deployment. It's not a single person, but uh, many teams coming on board. But for foremost actually was the generation of the master list. That was the first goal and um, to ensure that uh, we do get the right uh, master list. He actually listed a few things that they did in PGH. Well, first, he said that he gave a very reassuring message to the community. Second, guided by the DOH and WHO prioritization, PGH came out with its own priority listing with a second tier in anticipation of the no-show. And I think you know, if you know exactly when you'll be vaccinated, that brings a lot of... Uh, assurance that you're on the list, but you may not be the first, but the second or the third. Now, the third point was the planning for the pre-registration. And he mentioned the on-site and the online registration, specifically to identify the predetermined risk of the, of the persons, whether he or she will need 15 minutes observation, 30 minutes or one hour. And um, I think, you know, the the exercise of getting the comorbidities, the known allergies, actually gives assurance to our community that we care and we're making sure that we are prepared should there be an, an emergency. And um, actually, Dr. Gap showed his, uh, his uh, form showing that he's got a green sticker. And I think, you know, making it so visual, green, red, and pink actually tells us that uh, one is prepared actually for the vaccination day. 
The fourth part was the, the planning for the physical layout on the actual day, the layout for the screening, the vaccination, the observation area, and the area for emergencies. And as early as now, they, he mentioned that they've even identified already the bottlenecks during the actual vaccine deployment. But the, and the last part that he said that, you know, we cannot, uh, we, not, we cannot never go wrong with the series of simulation exercises. And um, it, it's not just the, the, the vaccination day, but even the arrival and the storage of the vaccine. And it's so heartwarming to hear that there are backup plans as early as now. And the idea of overbooking actually is one assurance that nothing will be wasted on that day. The transparency of PGH Director Legaspi on the plans has raised the trust of the community on the vaccine deployment, whereas an earlier survey showed that only 75% of the PGH employees were willing to take, to take the vaccine. This has increased to 93.6% during the pre-registration. And as PGH awaits for the arrival of the vaccine, another team in PGH is taking care of the communication risk management through the FAQs and infographics. And I hope that, you know, on vaccination day, Director Gap, we have 100%. The whole UP community congratulates the PGH team under the leadership of Director Gap in presenting the plan that aims to protect its health workforce who is committed to continuing service to our Filipino brothers and sisters. We had two reactors. Uh, we had uh, Dr. Lito Aquin, Chief Medical Officer of Asian, Medical, Asian Hospital and Medical Center. And he started off by saying, you're only as good as the detail you put in the planning. And again, we, we hear the word planning. He had a couple of main messages. The first message was that the vaccine deployment needs systems and integration. During, during this time, we in silos, everybody must be working on the same page every day. The second point was the, the point of simulation. And he had a couple of suggestions actually to PJH uh, Director Gaplegaski. He said, yes, it is important, but during the simulation, consider the following, the risk management and staff safety. In terms of risk management, we have to identify the failure modes in every step and rate the severity of that failure. And, um, we just have to identify how, how probable they will happen, what are the highest risks. Uh, this is interesting when he, he cited the, 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 the borrowing of, a, of the ultra low freezer in NIH, the complexity of this step, meaning that NIH will have to empty that, that, um, that freezer for the duration of the, the vaccination exercise. So I think you know, these are the small steps that really make, make a difference. The second point in risk management is staff, sa staff safety. Well, of course, we saw the fiesta mood, you know, yesterday, the past few days, but he said, you know, um, we cannot have that fiesta mode on the day itself. Our second uh, reactor is Dr. Padolina, medical director of the Novartis uh, City Hospital and also the city health officer. And um, he, he, she started by saying, to gain vaccine confidence, we must be over prepared. So again, it's again the planning. The, the, the AVP presented by Dr. Padalina shows the similarity between the PGH planning and the Navota City Hospital planning or Navota City planning actually at different scales. The elements are the same. And the Dr. Padalina says that, you know, they've, they've come up with an AVP as a medium for training and to increase the vaccine confidence among the health workers in the community. Um, they started getting testimonials from their colleagues overseas who actually had the vaccine, reassuring the local community that it's actually okay. Dr. Padalina highlighted the, the importance of open communication to increase vaccine co uh, confidence. And in the process, she also showed that the micro planning is something that she has transmitted to the community to make sure that they know that management administration actually is ready. And it's interesting that they have already contacted Meralco. So Director Gap, we should do the same. They already contacted Meralco and made sure that should there be a breakdown, we will not be included uh, in the grid that will have a, uh, uh, a lapse in the, uh, in the electricity. They have top volunteers to make sure that they don't lose uh, their workforce. Uh, PGH had their own strategy for this, but in the case of Navota, they use volunteers, teachers, social workers, and other workers who may not be readily needed in the hospital. But at the end, she said, you know, it's all about leadership. And I totally agree with her because somebody has to provide direction. And in our 
And uh, from our three presenters, we heard the leadership at PGH, the leadership at Asian uh, Medical Center, and as well as, well as uh, Navota City Hospital. Leadership is crucial because you will have to set the direction. And just a few words from our, from our speakers and reactors. Uh, Director Gabli Gasmin said, being prepared is the least we can do. Let's give it a try. And he said during his talk, we should trust the people who chose the vaccine for us. Dr. Lito Aquin, you know, kept saying in, in terms of the simulation, test and retest, you know, test your system, test your flow. And you've got to think of yourself as a part of a team. Nobody can do this alone. Indeed, this is a hopeful time and it has been shared by everybody. It cannot just be one segment hopeful about this vaccine. And he appeals to the health workers that we've got to communicate, us, the doctors and nurses, the midwives and all the health workers to be able to communicate that there is hope and we have to be the champions uh, for this for this message. Dr. Padalina, he um, um, you know, said in, during her talk that you can only prepare so much. You already anticipated all the problems. And at one point, all you have to do is to reassure your team. There will be many challenges, but we will have to face the challenges. So she said, we need to do this right and together. We've got to be responsible. We've got to use the right education and counseling. And if we believe in the vaccine, then we must inspire everybody. The last words from uh, EVP Ted Arvosa, I think is for those who are not doctors in the audience, doctors, nurses, or midwives, if you want to be vaccinated, you've got to register uh, with the LGU. And once again, we hear the same message, vaccines do not save lives. It is the vaccination that saves lives. Thank you again to our speaker and reactors, uh, back to you, Susie and uh, Raymond. Thank you very much, it's Dr. Menchik Padilla, the um, Chancellor of UP Manila. Always great to listen to your citizenship. Okay, so next week, um, you remember we talked about the COVID-19 variant some time ago in January. We talked about what's the difference between a mutation, a variant, and a strain. And at that time, we didn't have any COVID-19 variants in the country. Well, the situation has changed. And we do have COVID variants of concern. So remember, sinabi ng guests natin, di ba? Marami, marami talagang mutation. But are there COVID-19 variants of concern? Meaning, are there mutations and variants that we need to watch out for? So we're going to get an update on that next week. We're going to have Eva Kutyonko de La Paz, the head of the National Institutes of Health, to talk about what the new COVID variants of concern are in the Philippines. And are we ready for that? We're going to have Raul Destura, the one who developed the first testing kit for um, COVID-19 in the Philippines, our very own uh, scientist from the University of the Philippines. And we're going to have Dr. Eileen David Wang, who was part of the first group that organized this webinar and has been at the back end of research on treatment, treatment protocols and getting the best uh, clinical management guidelines out for everyone in the country. So be with us next Friday. Don't miss this. This is a very important uh, webinar. It's we're going to hear the latest on the COVID-19 variants. So um, over to you, Raymond. So this formally closes our webinar for today. And magkita-kita po tayo ulit. Sana po yung ating mga regular attendees ay mas lalo pa pong dumami. Same time, uh, same, same date po, February 19th, I think, for next week, which is our webinar number 41. We again start at 12 noon kasi may mga nagtatanong po kung nag-iba na po ba tayo ng oras. Uh, on the, on, in front of you, it's being shown the poll results. Uh, may we ask those who are still on the call to be able to answer po. This is just a fun post test just to be able to assess your level of knowledge po. So makita-kita po tayo ulit next week. It's a date. Okay, so remember, let's stop COVID deaths together. Thank you, Dr. Susie. So to everyone, please keep safe, keep healthy, and see you online. The enemy remains unseen. I'll keep your hand in mine. Let's say a prayer one more time. 
I know you long for home, but I am here, you're not alone. I'll stay with you until the coast is clear. The others pain before my fears The others laugh before my tears But right behind the mask I look into myself and ask Do I have strength to carry on? My God, how long will this go on? I need you here to keep me strong I'm here to hold the line I'll keep my word Until my time Say his name to realize It's fine to be afraid Just hold on to the word he gave This time will come to pass Cause this salvation's made to last He'll carry you to see the break of day The others pain the from my fears the others bows before my tears But right behind the mask I look into myself and ask Do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong I'm here to hold the line I'll keep my word Until my head dies The others bend from my fears The others laugh before my tears But right behind the mask I look into myself and ask Do I have strength to carry on? For God alone, what's this go on? I need you here to keep me strong I'll keep my word, you word is mine The others bend before my fears Pushing on the spine of tears Please take us through another day Just hold my hand And I will hold the line I will hold Oh